Well, good morning again, and what a nice morning it is here on this, well, I'm recording on Tuesday for Wednesday, uh, but it is a beautiful morning, and uh, just watching yesterday, the bees are out flying, and it's marvellous to see them, so that's always a great sign of springtime. But today I want to talk to you about the next part of the journey that Jesus makes to the cross. Now, he has come into Jerusalem. We considered the journey, which was prophesied nearly 460 years prior to the time of Jesus arriving at Jerusalem on that eastern gate. But now we move on from that and we come to the moment when he clears the temple of the sellers, those who are filling up their pockets with selling the sheep and the birds and so forth for the sacrifices. And I just, as I think about this, I want to ask you this question. How do you feel about those politicians who come out with these kind of, I would call it a politi politician's reply? Do you know that sort of reply when they're asked a very direct question and they faff around and they come out with something that says, well, not really anything, in order that they haven't got, well, they don't want to lose face with somebody out there. You know what I mean? So you tell me you, you really believe that this is a good thing or a bad thing. You're asking for a clear decision and they, they won't say it because they know that perhaps the people who vote them are 50-50 or they're one side or the other. It just makes you think they have no courage of conviction and they're more interested in power and party than they are in the people and the vision of what's right. Now, having said that, I'm sure we've all found ourselves in times like this. So let's Let's dive into this. Now, Jesus, we read verse 45, of chapter 19 of Luke. He entered the temple and he began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Just a couple of verses, that's all uh, that we read there. And then, and he was teaching daily in the temple the chief priests and the scribes and the principal men of the people were seeking to destroy him, but they did not find anything they could do for all the people were hanging on his words. Now you get the picture. Jerusalem is thronged with people for the Passover. There are thousands of people. They, who Jesus is and what he says and what he's done has been building year on year for the last three years. And now Jesus is in the middle of this thronging crowd. And then we read, One day as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel, the chief priests and the scribes with the elders came up and said to him, Tell us, by what authority you do these things? Or, who is it that gave you authority? And he answered them, Well, I will also ask you a question. Now tell me, was the baptism of John from heaven or from man. And they discussed it with one another, saying, If we say, from heaven, he will say, Well, why did you not believe him? But if we say, from man, all the people will stone us to death, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know where it came from. And Jesus said to them, Well, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. What an interesting moment. Jesus is in the temple. These next few days he will come and go. He goes out to Bethany to the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. That's his kind of refuge, respite in the evening. But during the day he comes into the temple and he teaches the people. And he, he really has come to take on the enemy. That's what it is. Here is Jesus who's come as Zion's king to the very heart of where the trouble was. The leaders, the blind leaders, the priests, the religious rulers who should be leading the people. They are appointed by God to lead the people in truth. And what he finds is the commercialization of the temple services. And what's really going on? Well, there should be a means of buying and selling sheep and birds. That's, of course, but that's not the job of the priest, nor is it the job to be found in the temple. And it would be outside by some other business individuals. But what has happened is that the temple authorities not only allow it to take place in the precincts, but they seem to have a hand in the business matters as well. They are benefiting materially from the people's desire to worship. Wow, 
corrupting the very sacred space. This is just no sort of putting your hand in the till type thing. This is a massive issue. And the Lord Jesus drives all of these people who are selling out in this special temple space, so significant in every way, and he will teach the people. And so now what we have is the, as it were, he throws down the gauntlet, is the phrase. There's now going to be a contest right in the established heart of the nation. Jesus on the one side, the established religious leaders of the day on the other side. Hmm. And so, as a consequence of this, they then challenge him. By what authority? Because their very authority is, of course, being challenged. And how he answers this is so interesting. And instead of just saying, oh, it's by this authority, by the authority of, of my Heavenly Father, he is the Messiah. He's designated the Messiah, both by word and deed. In, in every way, he is clearly the Messiah. But that's not how he goes about Jesus has such wisdom. Was the baptism of John from heaven or from men? A very simple answer. Uh, like the politician, you know, could you tell me, were you there or were you not? Did you agree or did you not? Did you vote or did you not? And this question, you know, you try to understand what's behind it. Well, remember, three years earlier on the banks of the Jordan, publicly and very uh, crucially, there's this great movement. John the Baptist comes preaching a baptism of repentance, declaring that he is the one who prepares the way for the Messiah. The people recognize him. They acknowledge him. They go out by their thousands to him. They're now living through momentous times. You see, when you and I read the gospel records, we are maybe so familiar with reading them. We don't get the impact of the from nothing to everything moment that comes with Jesus stepping onto the scene of time or with John the Baptist. We don't get that because we've been living with this perhaps for years and years, as even from childhood. And so living through these amazing times, this is really something amazing that's all happening. And so what had John the Baptist said and what had he done? He claimed to be the forerunner as it's prophesied in Isaiah 40 verses 3 and 4. He declared Jesus to be the Messiah. And so when Jesus asks about John, John's baptism, he's asking, what authority had John to act and speak the way he did? The people recognise John's authority by going out in their thousands, preparing for the Messiah. But as you read back in the Gospel record, Luke 7 tells us, in verse 30, this is a quote, the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purposes of God for themselves, not having been baptised. That's speaking about John's baptism in the context of it. And then in Matthew 3 and verse 7, you read there that when some of them came out, John called them what? He called them a brood of vipers. <laughs> Hardly a great testimony to the character of these religious leaders. So for them to come up to John, uh, to own up to John as being authentic, they would have to have been admitting their guilt. For they have rejected John and they have despised John. And so they come out with a politician's answer. We don't know. You see, what lies behind that? Fudging the answer, negating their own authority. We don't know. And, and this is what's going on at this time. This battle that is set there between Jesus, who is the way, the truth and the life. Between Jesus, who is the true Messiah. Between Jesus, who is the King of Kings. Zion's king, and between those who have set themselves up in a place to defend their own power base, but who in many ways represent the evil hands of Satan. They are not with God for God. They are corrupting. And so Jesus has taken the battle right into the very heart, and we're going to see what's going to happen as a result of that in these next couple of days. We're going to look at Jesus as he goes to the Passover and as he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. Those are our two final visits on this journey before Jesus goes to the cross. So let me pray for us for today. Dear Father, we thank you that our Lord and Saviour is truly the one with all authority. As he said himself, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And we thank you that he rules and reigns not over the universe only, 
but over our hearts. Lord, that's what we want more and more, and we pray for that in our lives day by day, that we'll be testimonies to the ruling King in our lives, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.